Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. I wanted to show you some center of mass example problems, so today I'm going to be showing you this problem here. We're going to sketch the region bounded by these curves, and then we're going to find the exact coordinates of the centroid of that region. So the curves we have in this case are y equals e to the x, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. And before I jump into this problem, I do want to just kind of quickly mention the difference between a centroid versus center of mass. Really, in a lot of contexts, they're going to be the exact same point. You just want to keep in mind that center of mass usually refers to finding basically the center point of some object that actually has mass, like a thin plate, for example. Whereas a centroid is used to, to find essentially the center of mass of a 2D region, right? So like in this case, we have this region, which is being described on an XY plane. A 2D region on an XY plane doesn't actually have mass, therefore center of mass doesn't really make sense. But if you're comparing that to the center of mass of any uniform density object, like a thin plate, the centroid and the center of mass are going to be the same point. They're going to use the same formula to find those two things. So we can kind of use them interchangeably in a lot of cases. Here we're going to be finding the centroid, but we're going to be able to do that using the center of mass equations. So that center of mass equation integrals are on my Calculus 2 study guide, which is why I wanted to show you how to use them. If you haven't already checked out my Calc 2 study guide, there's a link down below where you can go check that out. It's available for instant download, so you can start using it today. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out down below. But let's go ahead and jump into this problem. So like it says, the first thing we want to do is sketch this region bounded by these curves. I would probably recommend doing that even if they didn't tell you to do it. Um, because that's going to help you kind of confirm if the answer you find is reasonable based on the region that you have. So let's just go ahead and sketch that on an xy axis here. So this first function here, y equals e to the x, that's just going to be, you know, exponential function right here. Looks something like that. Where we have this horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. y equals 0 is just going to be the x-axis. x equals 0 is just going to be the y-axis. And then x equals 1 is just going to be a vertical line at x equals 1. So you can see the region bounded between all these different functions is just going to be this little region right in here. So what we're trying to do is find the center of mass of this region. And it is maybe helpful to point out also this function y equals e to the x intersects with the y-axis at 1. So now, like I said, pretty much the easiest way to solve these kind of problems is basically just using the center of mass equation integrals. So let's start with those equations and I'll show you how to use them. So here's the x bar and y bar equations where basically x bar represents the x coordinate of our centroid and then y bar represents the y coordinate of our centroid. So we're going to have to use both of these to figure out the exact coordinates of the centroid like the problem asks us to do. We'll have to basically figure them out separately. So one thing I want to point out before I show you how to use these, they basically are built on the fact, you can see both of these equations just use this f of x here. They're basically built on the fact that you're finding, uh, you know, the centroid of some region which has some function f of x as, you know, either your top or bottom bound, and then the other bound is just like, you know, the x-axis here, y equals 0. So since we're looking at this region bounded between y equals 0 and then this function here, e to the x, that pretty much tells us that our f of x is just going to be e to the x, and then y equals 0 being our lower bound of this region is kind of baked into that equation already. The other piece to look at is this capital A here. That is just telling us to use the area of this region. Um, I have made another video how to find the area between two curves. You could apply that same method where the two curves are y equals e to the x and y equals 0. If you want to check that video out, just go ahead and click up at the top of your screen. I'm not going to show you that whole process. I'm going to kind of skip through that. So if you want to see that, be sure to check that other video out. Uh, and then we also have the bounds of these integrals here, a and b. Those are basically just the left and right edges of our region. So in this case, we can see that our region is between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So that tells us the bounds of these integrals are going to be 0 and 1. And that's going to be true for both of them. So now that we kind of know what these equations mean, let's go ahead and start using them. So we'll start with x bar first of all. So like I said, I'm not going to show you all the steps to find the area of this region, which we're going to need for this big A here. But if we do follow that same process in that other video I mentioned, we would find that the area of this region is e minus 1, 
which is about 1.7. If you wanted to use the estimate of what that is, that would probably be fine. Um, but I'll go ahead and leave it in exact form until we get to the very end, just so that way we know our answer is gonna be as accurate as possible. And then we're gonna have the integral from A to B, which again is zero to one, because that's the left and right edge of this region. And then we're gonna have x times our function f of x, which is e to the x in this case. So now that we've kind of plugged in all our pieces here, we can go ahead and evaluate this integral. So I'm not gonna show you all the steps of how to evaluate this integral. I have made another video of a very, very similar integral. If you wanna check that out, you can click up there. But you would wanna just integrate this using integration by parts. And then once you figure out the antiderivative of this function, x times e to the x, then you would evaluate that from zero to one. And if you do that, you would actually find that this integral here, this whole piece of our equation right here, is just gonna be one. So basically, our x bar is just gonna be one over e minus one times one, which obviously is just gonna be one over e minus one, which is about 0 0.582. So now we've figured out where our x coordinate of the centroid of this region is. So now we would want to go through, you know, similar kind of process, but using the, the other formula that we had up here for the y coordinate of our centroid. So let's go ahead and, and kind of get this formula set up and then we'll use that to figure out where the y coordinate is. So again, a lot of this, this equation is going to have a lot of similarities to the x bar equation. So we could kind of just you know, automatically know a lot of it. For example, this big A here, just like we had before, is just gonna be E minus one. And then we're gonna have the integral again from zero to one. The bounds of this integral are gonna be the same as the bounds of the other integral we did. And then we're gonna have one half times our function F of X, which is E to the X, all squared DX. And then to evaluate this integral, we would, first of all, we could pull out this constant one half, pull that out, so that'll give us one over two times e minus one times the integral from zero to one of e to the x squared. Now remember when you have a power raised up to a power, you can multiply those powers together to combine that into a single thing. So that'll give us e to the two x. And then with respect to x, and then we would again want to evaluate this integral from zero to one you could do this integral using u substitution. I'm not gonna, again, show you all the steps of that, um, but I would recommend doing that yourself. You could do that with u substitution. Plug in one, plug in zero, find the difference between them. And this integral is actually gonna be equal to one half times e squared minus one. And then again, we still have this one over two e minus one out here. So we could simplify this a bit. Uh, e squared minus one, we can actually break apart using difference of squares. So first of all, this one half and this one half will just combine into one fourth out front. And then we're gonna have e, e squared minus one using difference of squares could break down into e minus one times e plus one. And then that's gonna be over e minus one. So this e minus one will actually cancel with that e minus one, just leaving us with e plus one over four, which we could figure out is roughly 0 0.9296. So basically we know the x coordinate of our centroid is about 0 0.582, the y coordinate is about 0. Point, we'll, we'll just call it 93, 0 0.93. So the exact coordinates of our centroid is going to be 0 0.582 or it probably would be better since it did tell us to find the exact coordinates of our centroid to leave it in this exact form. So actually we should say the exact coordinates of our centroid is 1 over e minus 1 and e plus 1 over 4. But we could use these estimates just to get a rough idea of where those would actually be on the graph, just so that way we can, you know, kind of make sure that those answers actually make sense, which is always a good thing to do. So this will be the coordinates of our centroid, and that should be the solution. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Together, I'm sure we'll be able to help get you some really good grades in Calc 2 and save you tons of time on your homework along the way. Thanks, and see you next time.